You guys like oysters? I got oysters. And today we're doing charbroiled oysters. I'm using Drago's New Orleans original charbroiled oysters recipe. Stick around, I'll show you how to do this at home. Hey carnivores, welcome to Eat More Vegans. My name is Al uh, and I hope you didn't come here looking for vegan recipes because everything that I cook is vegan. Grass and grain fed beef and pork and chicken and lamb and goat and all kinds of animals. They were all raised on uh, vegan diets and uh, I like to cook and eat them and show you how. So uh, today we're doing oysters and oysters are vegans. Oysters uh, feed on algae and on phytoplankton, which is microalgae. So these guys qualify to be on the show. Now about 30,000 of you have watched my Acme Oyster House char grilled oysters recipe, which is crazy because I only had like a thousand or 1500 subscribers when I published that back in January. And uh, it's a fun video and it's delicious at home. But if you've been to New Orleans and talked about oysters, there's a huge debate. Drago's recipe versus Acme Oyster House's recipe. And uh, I gotta tell you, I've had them both. I love them both. Acme Oyster House was the first place that I had uh, char-grilled oysters. So it's got a special place in my heart, but Drago's has a really uh, nice approach and it's a simple approach. It's one that's easy for you to do at home. So let's get started uh, putting the components together. So the secret, according to Tommy Svitinovich, I probably just butchered your name, I'm sorry, Tommy, is uh, the sauce is simple. It's butter, it's garlic, it's pepper, and it's a little bit of oregano. And uh, so we're gonna recreate that from Tommy's recipe today. So I'm gonna put that in, uh, all the ingredients in this metal measuring cup because this is the cup that I use on the grill. So we're gonna start with about a teaspoon of black pepper and a pinch of dried oregano. You can use fresh oregano here, but there's not really any reason to. And then we want about two tablespoons of garlic that is uh, crushed or thinly chopped. I like to use fresh garlic, but you can uh, use the uh, stuff you buy in the store already minced if you want. Um, just go for about two tablespoons of it. Okay, and now uh, I'm gonna put in eight ounces of butter. Now I'm not even gonna bother melting this because this is gonna melt on the grill when we put it on there. So I'm just gonna put this stick in there so it will melt. Okay, so that's gonna be our butter. Now let's uh, move on to our cheese topping. Okay, our cheese topping is uh, pretty simple too. I've got about an ounce of Parmigiano Reggiano and I've got about an ounce of uh, Romano Pecorino and then uh, one more ingredient. We're gonna chop up a little bit of uh, parsley. So let me just take some parsley leaves off the stems here. Okay, now to chop these, by the way, I've got a new knife and uh, I wanna thank Dahlstrong uh, for providing this knife. I don't know if you guys have ever seen anything like this before. It's a new knife they invented. Uh, this is called the Guardian 8 inch chef's knife and it's part of the Shogun series. Um, so the idea behind this knife is it's ergonomic so my hand is gonna be right over uh, whatever I'm chopping or slicing with the chef's knife. Very different than working with a, uh, a long chef's knife where my hand would be back here and uh, trying to control the knife. So I uh, just got it, I uh, used it on a couple of things and I gotta tell you, it's pretty cool. And the Shogun series is uh, pretty amazing, Japanese AUS 10B steel. And uh, here's the best part, ready for the best part? Dahlstrong gives you guys 10% off on all of their products. If you use my coupon code, it's EMB10. Uh, and I'll put a link down in the description because Dahlstrong and Meat and Bone and Kick-Ash Basket and Grill Blazer, the flamethrower people, all give you guys discounts. So I'll put all those links down in the description where you can get them. So I'm just gonna chop this uh, parsley up. See how nice this is with this right over my hand? And I can use the rocking motion. This feels like an extension of my hand, this knife. And so I've got about the same amount of parsley by volume as we had uh, each of the cheeses. So this is roughly equal parts Romano, Parmesan, and uh, chopped flat parsley. Now there's an ingredient you notice that I'm not using in either of the toppings that you see me use in almost all of my other videos, and that's salt. And the reason that I don't need to use salt is first of all, oysters are briny, they naturally have a salt component, especially uh, when you're getting uh, oysters that, uh, that are East Coast oysters that are particularly briny. But also we're gonna be putting all of this cheese on here and this cheese has plenty of salt 
and flavor. So uh, we don't need to add any salt to our recipe to get the flavors we want. As a matter of fact, if you add salt to either the butter sauce uh, or to the, uh, the cheese mixture, or if you use salted butter instead of all unsalted butter in the sauce, you're gonna be disappointed. Your oysters are gonna come out too salty. They're, uh, they're not gonna be quite as delicious. So now let's uh, go ahead and get these oysters out and get them shot. All right, so I always make a mess uh, with the oysters and uh, you guys probably know if you've been here before that I'm kind of into aprons lately. And uh, part of the reason is because since I made that acne video uh, back in January, I've lost over 50 pounds and now I can fit into aprons that you buy at the store and uh, not ruin all my fancy Eat More Vegans merch that I'm wearing here. So let's get these oysters out. Now you notice that I have a tray out here and normally I use these for like dry brining, but I'm gonna use it for the oysters because once I shuck these, we're gonna wanna maintain the liquor, the liquid that's inside there uh, because the oysters are gonna poach in there on the grill and this will allow them to sit Whereas if I just put them down on the table, they wobble all over the place. So let's go ahead and get ready for shucking. So these oysters uh, are Barrier Island oysters from Virginia. Um, normally you would be making these with New Orleans oysters, but I live in North Carolina and sourcing New Orleans oysters is really hard. So I picked a set of relatively large oysters. You don't want those small delicate oysters for char boiling. You want a big shell and a big oyster. And these were uh, available at my local grocery store. So good for me, right? So we're gonna hold the oyster like this. We're gonna dig the oyster knife into this end here, into this joint. And then we're gonna scoop the knife underneath the oyster here, just to separate it from the shell. And then you can see the liquor that's in here. We want this liquor to still be there when we get these on the grill. So I'll just set that there and I'm gonna go ahead and shuck a bunch more oysters. I'll be right back. All right, 12 oysters shucked. We've got our butter sauce ready to go. We got our cheese and parsley sauce ready to go. The smoker is up to temperature. I'll meet you at the grill. Hey, welcome to the backyard. If you've been here before, you recognize Darth over my left shoulder, the extra large big green egg. Now Darth is running at 500 degrees, burning nothing but Fogo premium hardwood charcoal. No flavor wood here. We don't need any cherry or apple or pecan or whatever to add flavor. The flavor is gonna come from the charcoal and from the butter sauce when it runs over. So speaking of the butter sauce, let me get this butter sauce onto Darth and let it start melting. Uh, and then I'll give you the rest of the program. Okay, that butter is going to melt really quickly. So uh, while it's melting, uh, looks from the smoke coming off like uh, maybe it's melting a little bit over the sides. That's okay. We got plenty in there. Uh, but let me tell you a little bit about what the program is, what I'm going to do so that I don't have to talk and you don't have to listen to me talk. You can just watch me uh, grill the oysters. So the oysters are going to go right onto Darth. I'm going to close the lid, let them poach in their own liquor for about a minute. Then I'm going to open it up and I'm going to get that butter sauce stirred up and I'm going to pour the butter sauce all over the oysters. We're gonna close the lid again, give them about two minutes, let them poach further in the butter sauce and cook the butter sauce. I'll open it up, I'll throw some of our cheese mixture on each of them, another minute and they're gonna be done. So let's, uh, let's go do this. Okay, I hope that was as much fun for you guys to watch as it was for me to do. Leah actually took some amazing pictures, actually, that I'll, I'll put some of them up on the screen here so you can see. She's quite the photographer. If you don't know Leah, by the way, Leah is my daughter. She's nine, almost 10, right? And she eats all kinds of amazing stuff, including sometimes oysters. So Leah, you remember that Acme Oyster House char-grilled oysters that I did back in January? These guys watched that about 30,000 times. 
Wow, is that crazy? That's a lot. Yeah, thank you guys for all of the support for that. I hope you like this video as much as you like that one. So this is a different recipe. It's actually an easier one to make. It's from a different restaurant called Drago's. And if you're in New Orleans, you're either an Acme Oyster Char Grilled or a Drago's Char Broiled Oyster. So you're ready to taste these and see if you like these as much as the Acme ones? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got three, wait. So there's a cocktail fork for you and for me. What's the third one for? Them. Oh, are we gonna give them one? They only get one though, right? Because you gave them two pieces of the lamb the other day, right? Sure. Okay, well you can give them two if you want. We, I made a dozen. All right, so this fork's for you guys. All right, which one do they get? Um, they get this one. That one? All right, pull it out. Let's put it up here for you. All right, just go ahead and reach right in to your phone there and grab that one. All right, and which one do you get? This one. Oh, going for a good one. And do I get to pick one or are you gonna tell me which one to eat? Um, you get that one. Oh, I get the big one. I get the daddy oyster. All right, are we ready? Yeah, no fingers. Use the cocktail stick, like Gordon says. Hey, fingers! It's not a buffet. Use the cocktail stick. Well, it's really good, but it's different, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's better. I think it's different and also awesome. What do you think? I think it's really good. Yeah? I think this is, I mean, I think even, this is something that even kids would eat, right? It tastes like cheese and butter and garlic and all kinds of good stuff. Hey, listen. I'm putting the uh, Acme Oyster House video right here. And if you've already seen that one, I'll put one down here. That's uh, Oysters Rockefeller I made. We'll see you next time on Eat, Eat More, More Vegans. Vegans.